Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. We're looking at the country of Nigeria particularly its capital city, Abuja, one of the most dynamic, larger cities on the African continent. And we're looking at a very critical problem concerning the shortage of electrical power and the use of very dirty diesel fuel. We have a gentleman who's actually working on a project with the ATV, the African Technology Village, to correct this issue. They're using a number of leading edge green technologies, and that's why they're being featured on the Emerald Planet TV to share these technologies world over. This is Edongset Nekarim. He's the CEO of Magnific Limited in Abuja. Uh, Edong, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we're glad to have you here from the African continent the country of Nigeria and the very beautiful city of Abuja. But tell us about your company, Magnific. Uh, Magnific was founded in the year 2009 when the power sector in Nigeria was privatized. And uh, the mandate of Magnific is to provide 247 uninterrupted power supply in Nigeria, uh, starting from Abuja, the federal capital territory. I think it's absolutely wonderful what you're doing and the mix of uh, green technologies, which we'll be talking about, is absolutely marvelous. Tell us a little bit about your collaborators, the African Technology Village, and then also Africa Kilowatt Holdings. How do you work with these two organizations to bring about a profound change in the provision of renewable energy to Abuja and eventually to Nigeria itself? Yeah, thank you very much. Ah, Abuja Technology Village uh, was set up in 2007 as a free zone to bring in industries that would serve as economic boosters for Nigeria. So it is in that regard that Abuja Technology Village opened a competitive bid and then we applied to provide Abuja City with a smart grid system. And then when we were selected as the preferred bidders, we now invited Africa Kilowatt um, USA to be part of this great venture. So Africa Kilowatt Abuja Technology Village are in partnership with us to ensure that we succeed in this regard. I think it's absolutely wonderful. You have this uh, very uh, wonderful collaborative effort going on. You're introducing uh, very leading edge technologies uh, into Abuja, Nigeria, which can be examples for the African continent. But looking at the map of the world, Africa for the first time is actually front and center as far as the official maps are concerned. It's been properly sized for the first time in uh, you know, a millennia. Why is Africa becoming so important? Africa right now is the center point of the world because Africa has benefited immensely from the other parts of the world, especially the Western countries. So it is right now, uh, the time is ripe for Africa to give back to the rest of the world, what it has benefited from the rest of the world. So I believe that Africa should begin to make concerted efforts in trying to ensure that they begin to tell their stories and also give back to the rest of the world. Yeah, and it has a powerful narrative because of 54 nations, a uh, huge natural resource base, very energetic people. 
Uh, it's just amazing what you have to offer to the world. But looking at Nigeria, why is Nigeria so important as far as Africa itself concerned? And give us a, a kind of a small snapshot of Nigeria as far as population, diversity, and its importance. Yeah, Nigeria is a country that is endowed with so much resources and about 200 and uh, something ethnic groups and um, religious groups, uh, I mean, languages and all that. And then we have three major religions, uh, which is the Muslim, Christianity, and other religions. And if you look at Nigeria, as it were, uh, because of its ethnic diversity with over 200 million people, you realize that Nigeria is actually a mini Africa. If Nigeria gets it right, it means that the rest of the world or the rest of Africa will also get it right. So Nigeria is very important for the continent of Africa. And actually, you were correct. If Nigeria gets it right, you really will have a direct impact on the world because you'll be influencing the other 53 nations on the African continent. Uh, and that's extremely important. And we don't really want to understate that. But looking at the number of states that you have uh, throughout Nigeria, each of these represent a great diversity as far as languages, uh, peoples, economies, natural resources. How does that diversity really help to propel Nigeria through the 21st century? Yeah, the potential that each and every state in Nigeria has is enormous, both in terms of human resources, in terms of capital resources, and uh, in terms of other resources. If you look at Nigeria as it were, we have states that are endowed with diamond, gold, while some are also endowed with crude oil and all that. So if you harness these resources, both the human resources, the human capital, and also the natural resources, you know, and then bring them together to the center point, you realize that Nigeria would achieve so much, you know. So I think the best time to do that is now. I think you're absolutely correct. Uh, but it has a challenge, and this is something I laid out in the very beginning as far as the electrical power, because the two things that every country, every people, even every community needs today, of course, water is number one, water is life. Uh, secondly is electrical power, because the world is running on electrical power. So we have this photograph here, Edong. What does this actually tell us about the state of uh, having access to electrical energy in Abuja, but also in Nigeria itself. Yeah, if you look at this picture, you realize that everything is disjointed and entangled in an unstructured manner. It's a typical reflection of what is currently happening in Nigeria's power sector. Uh, until the sector is restructured to capture the present needs and the present exigencies, we would also be seeing this kind of picture and that is the present reality. Yeah, I tell you, this, this really is a challenge. Uh, look at all this wiring spaghetti uh, on these uh, poles, and you really do see this as you drive uh, throughout the country. Uh, but going to the other major challenge, of course, a majority of your electricity is generated through these very dirty fossil fuel burning uh, power generators. Uh, tell us about those, and why is that something that is no longer accepted in Abuja or in Nigeria, and we must move way beyond these if uh, Nigeria, Abuja, and even the African continent is going to progress and have its true position in the world economy in the 21st century. Absolutely. There's no viable infrastructure without electricity. So if you look at this, companies have to survive. They have to make money. They have to do business. They have to continue being, I mean, in, in business. So they rely on generators. They have to self generate electricity for themselves. And it affects their balance sheet. As a matter of fact, they spend between 30 to 40 cents per kilowatt hour, which is far outrageous. And it impacts negatively on the, their balance sheet. So it's not clean energy, they, the cost of maintenance, maintenance uh, the cost of I mean, the noise pollution and several other costs. So if you aggregate these costs together, you realize that they are actually disadvantaged. So we must eliminate this. The brownouts and the, the smogs must be totally eradicated. Yeah, and also when we're talking about businesses, the, the hospitals, the government offices, the universities, the K through 12 schools, they all have to put up with these same types of generators. So it really is pervasive across the whole society 
not just businesses itself. And that's something we want to make very clear is that every citizen in Nigeria is faced with this. But also, even if you produce electricity, uh, you just can't transmit it uh, across the city or even down the street because of the, what we're seeing here. So these fires, what are these emblematic of as far as the electrical uh, service or the lack of electrical service in Abuja? Yeah, what causes this is basically the transmission capacity is not sufficient to carry the generating capacity that Nigeria has. The distribution capacity is also not sufficient to carry the generation capacity. So a lot of times when the generators want to transmit power into the distribution lines or the transmission lines that it were, you begin to have sparks because it's basically overloading the weak transmission lines. So until the transmission lines and distribution lines are totally refurbished, are revamped, we would continue to have this kind of crisis. Yeah, so it's a generation. This is really what you're looking at as far as the grid uh, and the generation capacity in Abuja and most of Nigeria is sitting under this shed right here. All these generators are lined up, ready to go to work uh, when the, there's a roving brownout, as they call it. So it really is a challenge uh, to... Uh, keep the businesses, the schools, the hospitals, uh, the nonprofit organizations, all of these on. But this is something that you see as you travel around uh, Busha. So every citizen is really faced with this. Is this correct, Edong? Absolutely. Every Nigeria self generates. Every Nigerian self generates. Um, out of every 10 Nigerians, it depends on generator. I, I would say just the maybe the government institutions and all that but even at that they also use generators so and then of course it has all the disadvantages that you can think of you know from they are susceptible to fire outbreaks we've had several fire outbreaks we, we've had people inhaling uh, generator fuel and dying families dying because of all this and i believe the time is ripe now to eliminate all this yeah i think that's very important but yet there's been a huge investment as far as uh, power generation, distribution uh, in Abuja across Nigeria. Uh, but again, it's just it's just staggering uh, the amount of investment, but yet the lack of uh, reliant energy across the whole society. Yeah, if you look at this uh, image here, you realize that despite the huge investment over the years in the, in the power sector, nothing, Nigeria's power sector has not increased beyond 5,000 megawatts. And that is because the structure as presently constituted is has not solved the problem. So we have to go back to the basics and restructure the power sector and then realign the various stakeholders in the value chain so that Nigerians will begin to enjoy the dividend of privatization. Yeah. So we're faced with uh, power outages. Uh, we have faulty circuits uh, facing uh, everything that's going on. So how is this collaboration working right now to change this and you have about 30 seconds to do that Edong. 30 seconds this collaboration is very important uh, to abuja because it's going to give power directly to who needs it the most and then free up the grid to other end users so we've decided that we are going to aggregate the industries first and provide them with power and then free up the grid to accommodate residential areas also so that everybody collectively would have steady power supply I think it's absolutely fantastic. And this is Edong Karinet, uh, the CEO of Magnificent in Abuja, Nigeria. Thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet. Looking at the country of Nigeria and particularly the city of Abuja, we're talking about the future of electrical power. Two things that we need in today's world. Number one is water, of course. Water and oxygen is life. And then also electrical power. And this is something that you see the logos here of the organizations that are collaborating in Abuja to bring a whole new world, new renewable energy, and new technologies to the African continent, not only just to Abuja, the capital city, and Nigeria. We have a gentleman that's actually at the core of all this. He's Ian Gonzat, and he is the CEO of Magnific. 
and we're going to be talking about the private and public solution embedded power program. Edong, welcome back to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Glad to have you here. Uh, going uh, just a, a, a little review, how is Magnific uh, ATV and the African Kilowatt Holdings working together to bring a new power solution to Abuja as an example, not only for Nigeria, but also for the African continent? Yeah, the, this collaboration and partnership is uh, fantastic because Africa Kilowatt has been able to aggregate partners from the US. Um, Abuja Technology Village has also aggregated some partners from Nigeria, whilst Magnifique has gone to China and other parts of the world to get experts. So collectively, we've brought in the best brains, as far as I'm concerned, to drive this Abuja 50 megawatt solar power project. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Why a focus on Abuja? It is the federal capital territory, but why the focus there and not some other place in Nigeria? Abuja is first the fastest growing city in Africa at some point, and then Abuja is the center point in Nigeria where all the governors, presidents, prime ministers, government functionaries, industrialists and businessmen all converge one way or the other so we believe that if they can see something like this happening it will be easier for us to replicate in other parts of nigeria and other, other parts of africa yeah uh this is really a very beautiful city uh of course this is without the haze that we have but uh, tell us about the dynamics and the leadership that's coming out of abuja for nigeria but also for the african continent itself yeah, Abuja, as it were, that's, this is where you have the ECOWAS headquarters, and then you have several other embassies here, all resident in Abuja. And Abuja, as it is, it is the federal capital territory of Nigeria, which is, is uh, Nigeria, as you know, has more than 200 million people. Mm -hmm. So I believe if Abuja sets example, others would follow. So Abuja is really, really important for us to tackle the infrastructure and electricity problems. We just want our viewers to have a really deep look at this very beautiful city, the green that's surrounding uh, the various buildings there. But then you have this challenge. What are we looking at here, Edong, as far as the challenge on power? And why do we have this haze on a day in and day out basis? Yeah, this, what you're seeing here is a smoke, which a lot of times is occasioned by um smoke and other things from from generators so the haze is caused by generator smokes or fumes as it were and then of course you know the health implication of all this it's really really bad for the health and it's not good for business so the whole idea is to eliminate this yeah and this is something i think is really important as far as abuja being a leader uh, not only for commerce industry healthcare, education these others but also it's going to be a leader in, in cleaning up the environment. And I think this is uh, critically important. So you have a very dynamic city. It needs new power sources. And this is something that you're going to be providing because you're uh, bringing in a very special distributed uh, yet uh, renewable solar power energy system. How do you think this is going to really help Abuja to move forward as we go through the 21st century? Yeah, absolutely. Our project has the propensity to expand industries, create more jobs, and also light up the city. Uh, there is no infrastructure without electricity. Electricity is infrastructure as infrastructure is electricity. So if we tackle this problem, you see expansion in businesses, industries would be able to produce more, uh, jobs would be able to be created, the banks would be able to, you know, give funding to, for expansion and all that. So power is a critical element that must be tackled. Yeah. Yeah. And also too the elimination as far as uh, burning uh, the refuge, which is uh, really one of the issues that you have. Uh, but more than this, actually, it really is the lack of reliable electricity that really is contributing to uh, the smog and the, uh, the haze that covers the, the city itself. But moving to uh, ATV, this is really a very dynamic partnership that you have. Uh, it's something that's been a long time coming. The World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, 
We're all involved in this. So how is this actually revolutionary uh, for Abuja, Nigeria, but also for the other 53 countries on the African continent? Yeah, this uh, is very important because I would give you an example of if you have a Lamborghini or you have a Ferrari and you don't have fuel to power the car, you realize that it's just useless. So what this project is designed to do is to give life to the infrastructure that Abu Abuja already has. It's also to give impetus to the kind of growth that ATV stands for, which is Abuja Technology Village, bringing new technology, power the technology, and send the technology across the world. So we are trying to tackle the issue of powering the technology. So what you're doing is you're really having this collaboration also with Africa Kilowatt to be a driving force for Abuja as an example of what really is going on in the African continent as it moves towards 2 billion people, a very populous area, but also it has the youngest population on in the world actually, and on the African continent for sure. So as you move forward, then how is this new projects, the ATV, uh, really making a difference as far as what is going on on the ground in Abuja? Yeah, ATV is a, I would say it's a microcosm of the macrocosm of what is expected of Nigeria. For me, every state in Nigeria should have the kind of infrastructure that ATV already has. Nigeria as a government should also have the kind of plan that ATV has. Because if you look, go to ATV, the road has been done, the drainage system has been put in place, the light infrastructure has been put in place, uh, technology uh, innovators have also been also uh, invited to partner with us in this kind of project. So ATV for me is one of the best innovation and initiative of the government of Nigeria. Right. Yeah, and it's absolutely impressive. Now, looking at this very simple chart and uh, diagram, uh, you know, you're moving away from uh, dirty diesel fuel, uh, reducing, eliminating the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, which is dirtying the air, the land and the water. So tell us a little bit about this very simple system uh, that you are in this uh, public private partnership to bring into Abuja, but also the ATV itself. Yeah, this diagram here represents a very simple system, unique, but at the same time very powerful in solving the electricity problem we are talking about. If you look at this system, there's a solar panel, there's also the transformer, there's the battery storage facility. So if you aggregate both the solar panels, put the inverters and transformers together, and then have a storage system, and then all of them working in unity to provide light to this house you're seeing, which is representing uh, the industries that we are given power to. So in simple, uh, uh, in, 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 in a simple term, this represents the entirety of our project. Yeah, I think this is just amazing because if you replace the house uh, with a hotel, with a university, with a bank, uh, with a manufacturing facility, I mean, it's really the same system is that you collect uh, the energy from the sun, convert it, try to store it as much as possible, have the proper transmission lines, and then it goes out and it just can functions uh, 365, seven uh, throughout all of uh, Abuja and around Nigeria. Uh, but this is really a, a look now, but also into the future, as far as bringing power into Abuja and Nigeria. Why solar? A solar has been tried and tested. I mean, they've, been, they've tried solar in India, tried it in Europe, and it's working perfectly. It's clean, it's noise-free, uh, it's environmentally, I mean, very good. And then if it can work in Europe, work in America, work in China, of course it has to work in Nigeria, mm. you know? So solar system, for me, it's faster, it's reliable, it's cheap, and it's clean. Yeah. the uh, the the cost of this is going to just be you're driving it down just by a tremendous amount. So it really makes the businesses, everything much more competitive 
uh, in Nigeria. This is a, a different type of system. So what you're looking at is that you're starting here. This is going to be a classic example. And then this is going to move throughout Nigeria, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. We are starting in Abuja, this capital of Nigeria, and then we're going to expand it to cover other states. And most likely we'll also go to other African countries. Yeah. I, I tell you, that's uh, really very, very important. So looking at the transmission lines, how is this all being incorporated as far as the production of the special solar renewable energy and then also to renew the transmission lines uh, within the ATV itself? Yeah, the, the transmission line is very critical. What we've done, we've also collaborated with Abuja Investment Company Limited, which is the investment arm of the federal government, so that we could build brand new if in, in transmission lines for the 50 megawatt we are producing and the subsequent power we are also going to produce. Because we know that you can have power if you don't have the transmission capacity, your power will be idle. So what we've done is to ensure that we factor in the cost of transmission into the project. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, going again to this collaboration that we have about uh, 30 seconds left, Edong. How do you see the collaboration working over the next five, 10 or 15 years uh, with the uh, Abuja transmission village itself? Yeah, the next five to 15 years, I see us hitting up to a thousand megawatts because once you have steady electricity, you begin to have influx of industries and influx of people. So we are catering for expansion. And of course, provision is also being made to get more project sites so that we can cover that uh, ambition. Well, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank you for being with us. This is Egon uh, Negrowim. He is the CEO of Magnific LTD in Abuja, Nigeria. Talking about the private public solutions embedded power program that's being developed at the ATV. Thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet. Looking at the city of Abuja, the capital city of Nigeria, we're talking about something that's called Abuja 50, a model that can be replicated, but also a model that really will be an example, not only for Nigeria, but in all of the African continent, but around the globe, because there's many things embedded into this very special Abuja 50 that can be world-class and will be example for the world as we protect mother nature. And we have Edong Set Nakarin, who is the CEO of Magnific LTD. And he's the one that really is uh, the poster child, if you will, for uh, this uh, development as far as the electrical power in this Abuja 50. Tell us a little bit, Edong, about Abuja 50 and why is it so important and really is world-class as far as what's going to be happening in Abuja. Yeah, Abuja 50 is a short term for Abuja 50 megawatt solar lithium phosphate battery system. This project is going to use the willing buyer, willing seller model of the electricity law in Nigeria to aggregate the power and send it directly to the industries who are also our customers. And then this initiative would ensure that they have 24 hours uninterrupted power supply to their facility. I think this is absolutely fantastic. Now, why Abuja? Uh, uh, Abuja is the capital city, so we understand the importance of it. But why not try this in a smaller city somewhere else away from the capital city? I mean, you're really going for everything when you're uh, doing this in Abuja because everyone in the whole society will see it, know about it, and actually 20 to 30 million people will be experiencing long-term uh, what you are creating in Abuja 50. Yeah, absolutely. Abuja should be like every other capital city in the world. We have the London Metropolitan City. We have the Washington District in the USA. We have the Shanghai. We have the Hong Kong. We have the Dubai. So why not Abuja? Abuja should be an example of how a modern city should look like. 
So we've picked Abuja so that we can show the world that Abuja can be a Hong Kong in Africa. Yeah, I think it's magnificent. Uh, but you've really worked very hard over the last number of years to bring the collaboration together to have the right partners at the table, no pun intended, and uh, to have that energy, the brain trust, the resources that you need. So this uh, picture here is really a, an example of what you've been going through for the last several years. How is this now translating into everything that's going on on the ground to flesh out the development as far as Abuja 50 and the ATV? Yes, when we started the project, we had to do uh, a lot of groundwork, consultative work with these various stakeholders. So we started meeting with the relevant authorities. We had this picture you're looking at is, is a meeting we had with the Ministry of Power. So at the instance of the minister, he brought in the best team that he's working with, you know, to come and listen to us and strategize with us and plan with us. So a project of this nature is not a project that can be run individually. It is a project that should be run collectively. So we did collective consultation with all stakeholders and created the right framework for the project. Yeah, and also there was a, a long uh, period of time to actually change the national laws, uh, the laws within uh, Abuja itself. So looking at this 24-7 uh, uninterrupted power supply, why is that a new model for not only Abuja, but for Nigeria? Yeah, the 24 hours uninterrupted power supply should be our target and our goal. Anything less than that is not good at all. If it is what doing, is what doing well. So anything short of 24 hours power supply for us is not good at all. So what happens if somebody is in the operation theater and there's no power, and or maybe there's power cut for five minutes? Of course, it's not going to survive. So our target is to ensure that we provide 24 hours uninterrupted power supply, just like every other country in the world that yeah. is developed, like America and China and other countries. Right, very, very important. But it really is important as far as uh, bringing all the stakeholders uh, to the table. And it's in a very impressive list. And we're gonna be seeing some of these uh, examples of the stakeholders in just a few minutes through the, the photographs. But what was it that really decided or gelled this whole thing? Okay, we can do this. We can move forward. We really can have an Abuja 50. What was really the linchpin or the deciding time that brought this to the fore? Yeah, it's born out of the fact that um, I've traveled to several countries in the world, from South Africa to the U.S. to China, and other West African countries. And I know that the catalyst for development is electricity. Once we can get electricity right, we've gotten everything right. So it is actually born out of passion for us to compete with other parts of the world. So that passion has taken us through uh, several years, you know, to put the right framework, the right plan vis-a-vis -vis the Nigerian law. And then today we have an Abuja 50 that would also, you know, be expanded to be Abuja 500, Abuja 1000, then to Lagos 500 and all that. Uh, it's, it's just magnificent as far as uh, how this, you're gonna have the multiplier effect. Well, I tell you what is really impressive is that you have this huge city. It's the largest city on the African continent, 20, 30 million people. Uh, yet you have this huge footprint upon uh, which this is actually being built. Uh, most of the infrastructure is in place. How are you able to find enough land to be able to do this, to uh, build this solar collection and distribution center uh, in Abuja itself? Uh, yeah, I think I would give the kudos to the federal government and also give the kudos to Abuja Technology Village. When they were given 840 hectares to develop that mini city, they actually allocated some land specifically for project like this for solar so it is part of that portion that was allocated for the green uh, energy and other other uh, green uh, services that they gave us so it's actually part of the mandate uh, for the abuja technology free zone and also abuja 
Yeah, because so many capital cities in the world would never have a landmass that large to accommodate uh, such a city. It's going to be almost a million people. Uh, you'll have thousands of people working, going in and out of this uh, area on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, it's just mind-boggling the uh, this standard, the scope, the scale of what's happening. We've seen this before. This is a very simple chart as far as what you're actually doing on, you know, this site uh, right here. Uh, but again, explain how this relates not only to the homes that we see here in this example, uh, but the large scale uh, hotels, the universities, the hospitals, uh, NGOs, uh, the businesses, uh, factories, everything that's going into this space. Absolutely. Uh, if you look at the trend that is happening now in the world, you realize that everybody, especially America, Germany, and other Western uh, countries are moving towards storage system. So you have the Teslas, you know, talking about energy storage. So we have to maximize the use of such technology. So which is why we added storage system to the solar that we already planned. Of course, we are going to evacuate both the energy from the solar and the energy from the, the battery storage via the transformers and inverters, mm -hmm. you know, and then transmit them through the transmission and distribution lines to the various facilities. So what you're seeing here is just a typical model of how we intend to generate and also evacuate the power to the various installations. And it's amazing, you know, you have something so profound where now you really have, in essence, no real 24 7 365 reliable energy source where you're going to this very simple model uh yet uh, very profound as far as the long-term impact and of course the reduction of, of cost is concerned so looking at the uh, atv uh, fze this uh free zone tell us about that and one of the things i i find uh, most interesting it's going to be a dollar denominated uh free zone correct Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, ATV has all the incentives of a special economic zone. You know, all over the world, there's a special economic zone, and the special economic zone is a zone that is properly incentivized. So they have the tax uh, waivers, the custom duty waivers, you have the 100% repatriation of profit and, um, you know, zero tax and so many other incentives. So ATV, as it were, also has these incentives. So we are going to be seeing that all our partners who are foreign partners are going to have 100% of their money repatriated when they begin to start uh, making profit and all that. So ATV is a special economic zone that is fully incentivized. Now looking at this uh, power generation, we have it, but the power embedded, what it is, is uh, as I understand it from the uh, ATV, is that actually the, all the power is going to be generated on the site itself and distributed uh, among uh, the major uh, stakeholders in that area. So it's interesting where you're actually building the power generation capacity into the project itself. And I think that's uh, quite novel, unique, and bringing the best technologies. But uh, tell us a little bit about some of these major stakeholders and why they are so important to take this Abuja 50 uh, from the drawing board into now reality. Yeah, if you look at this picture, you, are, you would see Nitcomsat. Nitcomsat is Nigeria's satellite company. And any satellite company in the world is a company that should be run 247, you know, with uninterrupted power supply, because they are going to be feeding um, other television studio, uh, stations radio stations and um, other facilities. So they are very, very key. And then because they are very key in providing such services, it only behoves on us to ensure that we provide them with the needed power supply that they, they require. The minimum standard is 24 seven uninterrupted power supply. And then you, and you have the Fraser suit, which is a five-star hotel and all that. Yeah, when you look at this type of facility, uh, this really is a 24 seven, 365, because a hotel, uh, our convention center really is a mini city uh, into itself. But when you start feeding into the universities, this is a, a real example. Also, the uh, the federal medical centers. What kind of example are you giving? And we have about 30 seconds left 
uh, udon. Why is it so important that you have a very broad base as far as the different types of institutions you're providing electricity to? Yeah, development comes in different and diverse ways. So diverse service providers like the hospitals, the universities, the technology companies have to provide different unique services that every individual needs. So we have to capture every industry irrespective of what they do and the kind of services they provide. Yeah, I think that's uh, really incredible. Thank you. This is uh, E. Dong Neckerman, the CEO of Magnific. Abuja 50, a model that can be replicated. Thank you for being with us as we create the Emerald Planet. We've been talking about Abuja 50, the program and by the ATV, which is the Abuja Technology Village, to uh, generate its own electrical power through solar renewable energy and provide low cost green energy to over 200 organizations, uh, companies, hospitals, universities, nonprofits, even the World Trade Center, all in this magnificent area called the Abuja Technology Village. And we have the gentleman who is really the linchpin as far as creating all this. This is E. Dongset Nakarim. He is the CEO at Magnific. And uh, they're the ones that are going to be providing the on-site electricity for this very huge project that looks just like this. So, Edong, welcome back to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you. Thank you. Looking at this Abuja Industrial Park, uh, this is really an audacious project, uh, huge. Tell us a little bit about the, the land mass where all this is being built and how this is really changing the dynamic of Abuja as the national capital city of Nigeria. Yeah, Abuja Technology Village is occupying 840 hectares of land, which is 8.4 million square kilometers. And the ambition is to replicate Dubai, which is basically a special economic zone. So Abuja Technology Village would bring in industries from various countries, uh, ranging from technology industries down to uh, information technology, as it were, and also other cottage industries to come and set up in Abuja and also have the incentives that every economic zone provides. This is really a huge footprint that we're looking at right here. Uh, it's going to include almost a million people actually living in and around this uh, entire project. Uh, thousands of people uh, working here. And again, it's going to include the schools, the hospitals, uh, various NGOs, the World Trade Center, all is coming into uh, this area. So why is your renewable, low cost, uh, green technology, green energy so important? to make this a success? Yeah, we are very important in the sense that green energy is this way that every country that has signed up to the climate change initiative, you know, is embarking on. So the clean energy, reliable energy is an offshoot of the campaign against dirty fuel uh, 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 system, I mean, uh, initiative. So the clean energy would provide reliable uninterrupted power supply. Now, looking at this, and I'm going to let you explain this. Uh, this is a little more complex, but it directly relates to what you're going to be doing within uh, the ATV. Uh, but the whole thing about uh, moving away from the current uh, energy, where is most of the energy coming from today? And why is that totally unacceptable and actually is even man mandated against within the ATV? Yeah. Most of the energy currently is coming from their dirty generators, sometimes from the grid. And you, you know that the centrally networked grid, by operational implication, has constituted a lot of constraints because of the weakness of the transmission lines and distribution lines. So today, we have a lot of shortage of, of power. And our system is designed to give uninterrupted, clean, reliable, steady power. 
and it's going to be via solar system. So if you look at this, you will see the solar panel, then you will see the charge controller, you will see the transformers and inverters, and then you have the switching circuits, then it goes straight to the transmission and distribution lines, you know, including the storage system, so that when it's a bit, a little bit dark, our power keeps on, you know, uh, supplying to our end users. Yeah, I think yeah, this is really a magnificent city that you have. Uh, very, very important. Uh, why is uh, Nigeria taking this very bold stand on the African continent and saying we are making our stake for the future of Africa is going to be in renewables? Yes, the future of the world, not just Africa, is renewable. So every country must embrace re renewable energy. Dubai right now wants to eradicate all the dirty fuels. And I'm sure that uh, by 2070 or 2080, which is their plan, is to totally, totally rely on rely, um, and renewable energy. So Nigeria also should look at countries like Dubai and follow them, follow their example, because there's nothing wrong copying what is right or what is good. Yeah, and this is something that's really very important for Nigeria, uh, even though it has vast resources as far as natural gas and uh, crude oil is concerned, it wants to be providing that to other countries around the world that may need it, uh, but it wants to move away and be self-sufficient as far as its own renewable energy. And I think that's something that uh, goes a long way as far as the nation is concerned. It's setting up as we see in this uh, example here, a new green future as far as energy within Nigeria and on the continent. So what do you see as far as uh, the movement towards green energy in Nigeria uh, and also for the continent? Yeah, what I see is that there's a lot of awareness now. There's a lot of campaign for green energy. There's a lot of funding for green energy. There's a green energy fund. There's the Power Africa initiative that even the U.S. government has actually, you know, uh, done for Africa. So there's a lot of campaign. There's a lot of advocacy for green energy. There's a, there's a lot of innovation also. So there's innovation. There's new technology just for, for storage system, for solar system, for all sorts of technology coming for, for green. So I believe today is the right time to take decisive action to ensure that we also embrace green energy initiative and provide those initiatives to our optics, customers, and the country at large. Right. Uh, keeping the lights on, why is this something that hasn't happened in the past, but yet this is the, in essence, the promise, the guarantee uh, that the government, private industry, industries, uh, public private, public private uh, partnerships like yours, why is this so important now, the 21st century, that you're really going to keep the lights on? Yeah, absolutely. In the past, we've had electricity corporation of Nigeria. We've had the we've had the National Electricity Power Authority (NEPA). We've also had the power holding. Company of Nigeria, PHCN, before it was subsequently privatized. So the grid, as it were, has journeyed through se several uh, hands and it has not solved our problem. So the best thing that the government did was to, pri to privatize, you know, make the provision of power totally profitable. And because it is profitable, profit would bring in investment. So every inv investor wants to make money. So by making money, you have to provide services. So if you look at this uh, diagram, you realize that there's a direct shift from the old status quo to the new. So the next level is providing uninterrupted power supply and light up all the unlit bulbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, very, very important. Uh, looking at uh, this very simple chart as far as uh, what you're uh, mandating, uh, what's in the uh, national law and also within Abuja uh, city law in order to guarantee that you're actually going to keep the lights on? Yeah, absolutely. If you look at this chart, um, establish is to design, construct, and operate a 50 mega solar system in Abuja. And then, of course, we bring in the, the right structure, which is the partnership between ourselves, Africa Kilowatts, Power China, and others. And then, of course, with this partnership, the next 
um, arrow is pointing to the supply. So with this structure, we are guaranteeing the supply, I mean, the off-takers, that they would have constant power supply. I'm going to leave this up here. This is a very simple chart, but why is it so important that the FTV actually produce its own power within the development itself? Why not have it somewhere else? Uh, because uh, uh, the special economic zone, the laws are within that cluster. So all the bottlenecks have been eradicated by the fact that they are operating within a confined, defined special economic zone. So you would not have a lot of other agencies trying to uh, mandate them to get unnecessary licenses or approvals that would delay the development of ATV. So the special economic zone or the free zone, as it were, is fully incentivized such that they are not really, really uh, uh, bound by external regulations. And this is critical for developing the power sector there. So that at the end of the day, the subscribers and tenants there would have access to uninterrupted uh, electricity supply, devoid of any challenges as a result of uh, external uh, interference. And, and the interesting thing about that, uh, Edong, if you really think about it, is that uh, each day they can go and they can see their power being generated uh, by the, uh, the solar panels uh, coming in through the converters and being distributed around if they want. There's not many projects uh, in the world where you can actually, you have the power being generated right there beside you uh, whatever type of uh, structure you're in. So looking at this, this is uh, a map of this whole area. Uh, and this is really a tremendous footprint uh, that you have that Abuja City and the federal government of Nigeria has committed itself to. So this uh, FCT uh, really is a special example for the world. Absolutely, absolutely. It is a special example for the world not just um, Africa. It is a well-developed uh, city, well-planned. Every structure in FCT is well-planned, including the trees. You can't just go and fell a tree without seeking permission of the government. So FCT is very critical. And of course, electricity is critical to ensuring that they meet the standard. Yeah, and it's also, you're bringing in uh, world-class companies that are working with you. Uh, you have uh, long-standing agreements, which is uh, very, very important. And I think this is something that really sets uh, what you're doing apart from the others. But we're going to go out on these uh, examples of uh, where the power is going to be used. Let's go through these quickly, and then uh, we'll end up, what do you see for the future for the uh, ATV and this type of uh, public power uh, partnership as we go through the future. Thank you, thank you, I'm with you. Now go through these uh, these examples we have here, Edong. Yeah, this is a nice Comsat, uh, which is a satellite company. Uh, I'm standing just outside the night Comsat. They're the foremost satellite company in Nigeria and they provide uh, services. Uh, this is the Chodgate building, which which is the Wall Street Center in Abuja. Uh, it provides a lot of services from offices down to residential and to other businesses. I think, I think it's fantastic. And then being able to service a, a very large cement company is quite unique as far as uh, solar energy is concerned. And then uh, the diversity of what you're providing power to for the hospital. What do you see over the next five years? And you've got about 10 seconds to do that, Edong. Got to be quick. In the next five years, we're going to hit 500 megawatts in Abuja Metropolis, supplying important government facilities and private facilities. Uh, this is Edong Nekarin, CEO Magnific uh, for the ATV, Africa Kilowatt Holdings, coming to you from the Emerald Planet. Uh, International Foundation, the Emerald Planet TV, as we create the Emerald Planet.